Hi, uh, welcome to this uh, presentation. This presentation is about the network protocol testing and test automation course which I'm offering. Uh, first of all, uh, thanks for perhaps considering me as your trainer. So in the coming slides, I'll explain the topics that I'm going to cover under this course and give you the details. And uh, I really uh, suggest that you go to the video fully to understand the course. And in case you have a question, you can always contact me. At the end of presentation, I'm going to uh, provide you the contact details, uh, and then I'm ready to answer any questions, okay? So thanks once again. So the first topic in the course I'll be covering is the TCP IP protocol suit, uh, covering all the layers, right, from the physical data link, network, and transport, and application. Now, there are several protocols that fit into TCP IP uh, protocol suit, but I'm going to cover those set of protocols which are relevant to our course here, which is uh, network protocol testing, uh, basically data network protocol testing. So I'll cover the Ethernet as a physical layer and again Ethernet as a data link layer and a couple of WAN protocols, point-to-point uh, -point protocol and frame relay. Then I take you to the IPv4, IPv6, which I refer as a routable protocols, and then go to the transport layer, TCP, UDP, and then about a bunch of application protocols like HTTP, DHCP, DNS, Telnet, and SSH. Along with this, I'll also cover the way any device would learn a MAC address uh, given an IP address is there, that is ARP, address resolution protocol. Followed by, from time to time, you have to do some sort of a connectivity test using a ping protocol or uh, you can use trace route to find the path uh, to a destination. So I'll be uh, coaching you or teaching you about the ICMP. All in all, these are the set of protocols which should lay a good foundation for you in the networking so that when we get into an advanced uh, topics later, it becomes easier for you to familiarize, uh, easier for you to understand rather. So this topic should help even those who are not so comfortable with networking but somehow want to get into networking world and start their careers. So this is a good, uh, uh, what you call, uh, module. And I'll be showing you live also through some lab exercises just to consolidate your knowledge in the basic TCP IP uh, protocol suit. Then I'll jump into the switch and switching protocols. To begin with, I'll, I'll explain what a switch is how it got evolved about the history where hub and bridges played a role earlier and how switch really replaced them. And uh, the switch operation, its internal architecture, the way it forwards the packet based on the layer two addressing. So all the details I'll be explaining. So once you know the switch as a product and how it operates, uh, then I'll start getting into some of the protocols, like for example, the virtual LAN, virtual trunking protocol, like virtual LAN trunking protocol where you create LANs across the switches, so you need a trunk port, and a protocol runs on it, which is VLAN trunking protocol. And then followed by, I'll explain the spanning tree protocol, because in today's uh, network, especially at an enterprise level, you need a lot of redundancy, right? So if a, if a particular path or link fail, you should, not, you should have an alternate route to go through the, uh, you know, internet or any other network. So you have redundancy, but that brings what you call a looping. A looping can happen if there is a broadcast packet coming uh, uh, and then you have more than one path to reach a destination, so it just loops around. So I'll explain the details, how that occurs and how STP prevents that. And then you have all its variants, uh, be it the rapid STP, be it the MSTP or per VLAN STP and all that. So I'll be explaining all the variants of it. And finally, not to forget, at a link level, we'll have a redundancy through LACP protocol, which, where we bundle several Ethernet links together and make it logically look like one link. So that way what happens, if a link fails, you have other links to take care of it. And then a bit of a load balancing also happens. So this is a link between two switches. So we are providing uh, a link level redundancy, and there is an LACP which actually monitors that. So all in all, with this topic, you'll be completely aware of all the switching protocols uh, that are incorporated in any LAN or uh, enterprise level LAN. 
and we have real devices with us uh, and of course we will use uh, simulators also for the larger topologies so you will be doing lab exercises on them to just to get to the bottom of this technology comfortably and then have a good grip over the domain and product knowledge and then comes the router and routing protocol the approach is similar to what i uh, followed in the switches so we will know router first what is a router how does it operate its internal architecture uh, what are the information bases it uses maybe router information base or forward information base we we go through a lot of security details how you can control a particular uh, user in accessing or not accessing a particular uh, destination uh, network or the application or destination network or here i'm referring as acs access controllers then we will see the qos policy so all put together when a packet enters a router there are a lot of things that the router would check so how you can consolidate consolidate all of them into a forward information base and where do you place that forward engine or forwarding engine uh, is what is the early architectural details of the router so you would know router as a product and you know how it operates then i'll come to the routable protocols to explain what ipv4 and ipv6 is and then i jump on to the routing protocols because that's the heart of the router which facilitates the forwarding of the packet so we'll touch static routing and soon realize that how impossible is it to do static routing given the number of routers you have to manage so we have to go to the routing protocols which are more dynamic in nature they learn the routes and they talk to each other the routers talk to each other uh, compare their databases come up with a, what you call you know whatever additional route uh, that is uh, learned by one router how it spreads to all other routers in case a route gets deleted how that spreads around so we'll discuss that and i'll be focusing on one specific routing protocol which is ospf uh, because the purpose of this training ultimately is network protocol testing and then test automation so i would make ospf as my basis and then teach you uh, the routing protocols fully and i'll be covering both ipv4 and ipv6 versions of the ospf and again not to forget we'll do this on a real devices and also like i will be using simulators for larger topologies so you'll have plenty of hands on expertise uh, and the goal is same that i'll make you stronger in domain knowledge and then also your hands on exposure so that you know the product as well so having learned the technology from a domain and product point of view the next topic would be the product life cycle because here the whole course is looking at an at an opportunity of being a test engineer so that's the aim here so i'll walk you through the entire product life cycle of any product especially focusing on the uh, router and switching product so right from the concept phase to plan develop validate launch sustain and ul i'll explain how these uh, phases are followed in any organization and in between you have these milestones a concept commit uh, you have an execution commit development commit first customer shipment general acceptance and finally end of life so what happens in these milestones or meeting points or checkpoint meetings what is the entry criteria for any phase and how do you exit that phase so what are the exit criteria i'll be walking that in addition i'll make you familiarize with all the departments that are involved in any plc and i'll be i'll be focusing on the engineering so where the testing is a part of it right so you have what you call uh, the cross functional uh, contribution to the product development and uh, with testing in mind how do you interact with them how to source uh, information from them how to provide information to them is what we'll discuss about it then i'll get into what you call the test design and test design methodologies and these are typically the job skills having known the domain knowledge having known the uh, product knowledge fully you may be uh, you know completely uh, you know sound in terms of your expertise but unless until you know how to optimally test any product uh you may end up either over testing it or under testing it so here is where i'll teach you a lot of methodologies techniques given the expectations of an organization whether you are in a unit testing whether you are in a feature testing or in a system testing are you testing it for the first time are you testing for for nth time so you need to adopt different techniques so that 
you don't end up testing you know too much you, you will not be too theoretical in your approach at the same time you are not like you know overlooking anything leaving gaps and then the bugs uh, escaping to customers we'll also cover about the bugs how to, how to track a bug how to submit a bug you know and uh, you know all kinds of test methodologies and then using the right technique given the requirement so this will be a pure test design test methodology module i must say that this can be used for any testing but i'll be focusing on honestly the networking technology and the routers and switches followed by the we'll take up a project so having known the project I mean product and domain knowing the test design methodologies we know the plc now now it's time to get into action so together we'll pick up a project we'll come up with a test plan we will uh, design the test cases and we'll see how if a defect is found how to submit them and have a plan in place and execute it and we'll do this for both switching and routing protocols and we'll really run these courses you will see the earlier module where you learned routing protocol or a switching protocol now you are testing them so there is a difference okay the user might just use it or learner might just learn it but testing is validating validating the product or the the release or software release riding on the product for a given set of specifications under a plan so that's what you will have a real life experience of writing a plan executing it reporting it right so that's what we'll do with a project so you'll all do a project then comes the automation part before we get into the automation part we will learn the scripting languages so by default being an ex cisco employee and since you do most of our exercises on cisco devices i'll be teaching you tcl tk expect so that's the language typically to cisco devices follow but i'll be giving uh, the overview of the perl and python as well because when you search out for a job uh, there could be a requirement by some organization they want you to be expert in perl or python uh, and not tcl tk so nevertheless once you learn one language it is easy to follow others so i'll take up tcl tk as my first target teach you that and then definitely i'll be teaching you the perl python uh, you know scripting languages and i'll give you a lot of exercises to practice so in this module we'll be like a i won't say a programmer you know scripting is not really compares itself to any high level uh, software languages like c c++ this is more like a you know uh putting together commands in a script and executing them automatically so that you have a good productivity so you can run number of case, test cases in a given time and also mainly the consistency so when we do manually you have a human inconsistency that's something you can avoid in an automation so in this module you will be like practicing scripting so that you really get comfortable all the commands are in your mind and so that you know uh, you know what it takes to put together a script right and finally we'll go for the automation uh, project so whatever the project we took for manual we'll pick the same i won't be giving a new project here we'll pick the same because you'll have a chance to see the difference so whatever you did exactly the manual testing you would know how much of time you consumed and what is ups and downs you went through in terms of executing it so you'll pick uh, some of the test cases in that or perhaps all of the test cases in that and then automate them and run them again and you will notice that in terms of the actual output whether it's a results or bugs or whatever is it you won't see any difference as far as the output is concerned between the manual and automation but the change is that you have done quickly real quickly uh, where a manual test case of a reasonable size you may execute one or two or two or three in a day you will end up doing hundreds and thousands of test cases in a day that's the difference in the productivity second thing is the consistency so every time you execute execute the same way because it's a script right so the manual project what we did we will now automate it and then see so that's how you are actually the knowledge is complete okay so you started with the basics of the tcp ip then learned switching and routing protocols practiced them on the products then you went through the product life cycle then you learned the test design test methodologies then you manually executed a project then you learned scripting languages and then finally you are automating it so with this model your knowledge is complete so if you go for an interview you would claim this 
sir, I know these these are the features or functions of a routing and switching. I know how they are implemented because I worked on Cisco products. Then I executed a manual testing project because I learned even testing testing methodologies and I can automate it also. Now, according to my knowledge, I think your knowledge is complete, okay? But only thing is your practice. Practice, doing this projects or such activities on as many protocols as possible, as latest technology as possible, you know, that expands your knowledge. So the fundamentals are in place. So here are the topics. So I just explained all of them one by one. So uh, the total duration is uh, 40 hours. So I offer this course both on the uh, weekdays and the uh, weekends. Irrespective of whatever you choose, the whole course should not uh, go more than four to five weeks. So it's roughly a month I'll cover, okay? So I'm flexible on that. And uh, I'm based out of Bangalore. So, but if I have a good participation, the number of part participants is encouraging. I don't mind traveling to any part of India especially the major cities. So I can come over there and uh, deliver the course. Maybe during that time, I may offer a full day course, maybe six hours to eight hours. That way I can cover the entire course in one week. Bangalore, I tend to do few hours every day if it's a working day. And weekends, I take about four to five hours. So that way I'll take a month to complete. But if it's an outstation, I can complete it in a week. So let me know, I'm flexible. If I have a good participation, I can consider going to other parts of the country also and then deliver that. So here are my contact details. Uh, my name is Samba Murthy and I come with over 30 years of experience of training. And of that past about eight to nine years, I've been working in the networking area itself. So that's the expertise I bring in and I'm a ex Cisco uh, employee. So both as an engineer and as a manager, so I know what it takes to hire engineers and what are the organizations uh, that involve, uh, that require such skills. I know what do they look for. So I can help you in getting you what you call job ready and help you to get a career in the networking industry uh, in any of these companies like Cisco, Juniper, Lucent, Alcatel Lucent, or uh, you know Ericsson, uh, Juniper all these companies which I have uh, R&D houses in Bangalore and around in India, okay? So contact me, my number is double nine four five seven double two six double one, or you can write to me at training at uh, cbtech.in or visit our website, so there is a form to fill up, so you can fill that form, it results in an email to me and I'll respond it, to it promptly. You can even visit our office in Jepinagar, so, but just let me know one day before call me and then so that I can be available. Otherwise, it can happen that I might be traveling or busy delivering some training at other place. So just if you can give me some advance notice, I'll be able to meet you in person in office and we can discuss it further, okay? So thanks once again for watching this video and hope to work with you in future.